Welcome to Full Comparison, where we give you full confidence in all your gear buying needs. My name is Jim Ripp, Director of Education and Live Event Production here at Full Compass Systems. Today we're going to talk about Crown Power Amps and live sound situations. And we have a very special guest with us today. My name is Tom Likens. I'm the local representative for Crown Amplifiers. So, Tom, I hear Crown and I... That's the very first thing that pops into my head when you talk power amps. Crown goes back a long ways, back to the 60s. We have more patents than anyone else. You can find Crown all over the world in tours and installations. And, and today we're gonna focus on the models that you might find in a, a local or portable system. So Tom, what can you tell me about all the overarching features of the three that we brought here to compare? The three we brought here today are all designed for live sound. Uh, the, the inception is they're gonna be moved around. Because they're gonna be moved around, we need to be able to make sure that our cables quickly connect and disconnect. That's why we have XLR connectors, we have speak on connectors, they're lightweight. That's part of how technology marches forward is what we can do now with half of the weight, less than half the weight. My days as a roadie, the, whatever the rack that had the power amps, we called that the widow maker. <laughs> exactly. So first up, we have the Crown XLI 2500. What can you tell me about this? The XLI series, this is really designed, this is my first amp. Say I'm a starting DJ and I just bought my first pair of loudspeakers. Maybe I don't have a ton of money getting started. This is a great way to get into doing the DJ thing or if I'm a live band, it's designed to get you in and get you started without having to break the bank. One thing I noticed right off the bat is the ability to connect it differently. You have XLR, RCA, and banana plug, that's what I call it? Yeah, so we've got bananas. We've also got uh, speak-ons on the back of this guy. Can you run this at different ohmages? Yeah, you can. Those are stable from 8 ohms or 4 ohms. This guy will do 500 watts per channel at 8 ohms, 700 watts at 4 ohms. Uh, this is just a perfect way to get you started. There's no DSP or anything complicated. Uh, just plug it in and go. All right, next up we have the XLS 1502. Tom, what can you tell us about this? Well, the XLS series is kind of the next evolution in our live sound amplifiers. One thing you might notice is it's a lot lighter weight, you know. Wow, we super don't... lightweight. And the big part of the reason is what's under the hood. So this one is built using our drive core technology platform, which allows us to take 300 or so parts and shrink them down to a single chip. We've also added some DSP, some simple DSP. Excellent. You don't need a whole lot, uh, you know, basic crossover, basic filters. If you're a DJ and you're evolving and now you're adding subwoofers, uh, you can use these amplifiers to set the crossover point. Real simple. Multiple inputs again on the back, XLR, RCA, speak on banana we've, we've got lots of ways in this amplifier and a couple of different ways out of this amplifier all depending on what type of cabling so as a performing musician myself and you are as well but i've also done the live sound end of running the sound in a setup as a solo artist i may not have the right cables this is fantastic that you have that con different connectivity there so on the fly if you're short a cable it's much easier to make sure that you can make the gig happen without having to run back home and yeah. get all the Yeah, as you're looking in your box and you can't find your XLRs, but if you can find a pair of RCAs, there they are, you can make it work. So how about wattages on this one? At eight ohms, this is 300 watts. At four ohms, 525 watts. And I can't help but, I'm gonna mention it again, the weight of this thing is unbelievable. Super lightweight, very important as an individual when you're hauling gear all by yourself to have something as lightweight as that. If you have to drag an amplifier around, make it a light one. Another thing you might want to consider too is the drive core platform allows us to be a lot more efficient with our current draw. You might be at a house that maybe doesn't have a whole lot of circuits available for you. We actually don't pull as much out of the wall as say a conventional design. Well, that's important as well. Very. And clubs vary all over the place when you're, <laughs> as we all know. They do. From outside plugging into a light pole or, or something on the side of the building, important too. You got it. All right, let's move on to the XTI series amplifier. We have the 1002 here that we've picked. What can you tell me about that? Well, the XTI series kind of represents the next evolution, so we're putting more features, uh, higher power points on these guys. If you're a DJ, and this is maybe not your first rig, maybe it's your second or your third, these have a little bit more of advanced feature set that might come in handy. The subharmonic synth. What's the subharmonic synth? The subharmonic synth is actually a synthesizer that's inside the box. That you can play? Not quite. Oh. 
There. But it listens to the bass note and it makes another note an octave below, which is really awesome for subwoofers. So any of the dance music, EDM. Exactly. Dubstep, that you can get that extra yep. beep you, on the low end. You can really make your subwoofers do their work. So you talked about the subharmonic synthesizer. Did I say that right? You did. I did, all right. And if you're pushing some pretty aggressive music through this, are there any safety features at all? We do have a feature in here called peak stop limiting. That basically takes a look at the waveform that's coming in, and if it starts to get outside the voltage rails of the amplifier, the amplifier is fast enough to pull it back down, preventing some damage to your, potential damage to your loudspeaker. Another feature we have is we can actually connect to the amplifier using Audio Architect. Uh, there's a USB port on the back that allows us to do amplifier programming uh, using that piece of software if you want. Similar to installed amplifiers. The very same. You can manage all the DSP functions from the front panel if you like, uh, or you can use the software. That's fantastic. It's a real hybrid type of amplifier. Mm -hmm. And we say, yes, these are portable, but they, in fact, every single one of these can be installed in a club, house worship, they, they do a great job there too. I think we covered just about everything on these, and it's, it's very apparent that, that between these three, you can cover just about anything, any situation. Absolutely, and it also represents a, a pretty good progression of you know, getting started and then moving up as you need more features or you're playing bigger audiences or you're using more loudspeakers. More things become important. At that. Protection, mm -hmm. controllability, multiple inputs. It's, it's They're just fantastic amps. So here at Full Compass, we get a lot of calls every day. People asking about amplifiers and what's going to be best for their situation. It sounds like this is the perfect place to start. Whether or not you're just getting started as a beginning DJ or you're a church with maybe not a big budget, maybe you're a club owner that has a stage with live bands and you need to add a couple more monitor mixes. We've got products that squarely do those jobs really well. Thanks again, Tom. Thanks for being here, enlightening us on all of these amplifiers. And thank you all out there for watching Full Comparison, where we give you full confidence in all of your gear buying needs.